This is one of the most complex machines humans have ever built. A modern jet engine. Inside, thousands of precision engineered parts spin faster than the speed of sound, all while withstanding temperatures that would easily melt solid steel. For decades, building one has been a challenge only a handful of industrial giants could tackle. But the engine you're looking at is different. It wasn't painstakingly assembled from thousands of parts shipped from all over the world. It was printed. In July 2025, this idea jumped from theory to reality. China's state-owned Aero Engine Corporation, or AECC, announced that its turbojet, built around a fully 3D printed structure, had just completed its first flight, soaring to 4,000 meters. This isn't just a small step forward, it's a genuine game-changer. An event that could slash manufacturing costs, shatter today's complex supply chains, and shake up the entire global aviation industry. This is the story of how China is trying to rewrite the rules of the sky, one layer at a time. To really get why this is so revolutionary, you need to appreciate what a jet engine actually is. It's not just a machine, it's a miracle of physics and material science. You've got compressors, combustion chambers, and turbines all running at the absolute edge of what materials can handle. Take the turbine blades, they're just a few inches long, but they have to spin thousands of times a minute while getting blasted by superheated gas that's hotter than the melting point of the metal they're made from. Each one of those little blades harnesses enough power to run a Formula One car. Building this is an art form perfected over a century. It involves things like forging, where giant hammers shape glowing hot metal, or casting, where molten super alloys are poured into incredibly complex molds to create single crystal turbine blades. These components are so advanced their internal structure is one perfect, continuous crystal, just to stop them from ripping themselves apart. The old way of making things is like a master sculptor carving a statue from a block of marble. It's incredibly precise, incredibly difficult, and it wastes a ton of material. This incredible difficulty created one of the tightest monopolies on Earth. Just three companies, America's General Electric and Pratt and & Whitney, and the UK's Rolls-Royce, control the market for the big engines that power the airliners we all fly on. For decades, this was China's Achilles heel. Even after becoming a global manufacturing superpower, they couldn't master high-performance jet engines. Their own commercial jet, the Comac C919, still depends on engines from a joint venture between GE and Francis Safran. This reliance on the West has been a major strategic weakness, the critical bottleneck in their dream of true aviation independence. For years, the question wasn't, if China could catch up, but how? And the answer, it seems, wasn't to play the old game better, it was to change the game completely. The breakthrough is an engine they call the minimalist lightweight micro-turbojet. It's a small engine, producing about 160 kilograms of thrust, but its importance is massive. It is the first turbojet in China where the entire engine structure was made using additive manufacturing and then validated in a real flight test. That successful flight proved the concept works, not just in a lab, but up in the sky. So, how does this tech actually work? Forget the sculptor carving away at marble. Instead, Imagine a magic chisel that only adds material exactly where it's needed, building the sculpture from the ground up. That's the core idea behind additive manufacturing. The specific technology here is a powerful mix of two ideas, multidisciplinary topology optimization and 3D printing. Let's break that down. Topology optimization is a design process that looks almost alien. Engineers tell a computer the forces, temperatures, and connection points a part needs to handle. The software then runs millions of simulations to evolve the perfect shape, one that uses the absolute minimum material needed for maximum strength. The result is often a bizarre, skeletal-looking part that no human would ever think to design, but it's the most efficient design possible. For years, the problem was you couldn't actually build these strange, organic shapes. Traditional methods couldn't carve or cast that kind of complexity, but 3D printing can. Using a technique like laser powder bed fusion, a high power laser melts and fuses incredibly thin layers of fine metal powder, one on top of the other, perfectly following the computer's blueprint. Layer by layer, the impossible shape becomes a solid reality. 
The benefits are huge. First, a massive reduction in weight. Less material means a lighter engine, which means a more fuel-efficient plane. Second, you can combine what used to be dozens of separate parts into one single, complex piece. This doesn't just cut down on assembly time, it gets rid of potential weak spots like welds and bolts, making the whole engine stronger and more reliable. And it's not just the structure. China is also pouring research into the materials themselves, developing new superalloys and advanced cooling methods for the hottest parts of the engine, like turbine blades. Pushing those temperature limits is the key to more power and efficiency. This achievement isn't just a cool engineering trick, it's a sign of a much bigger shift happening in global industry. For China, it's a huge step in its quest for technological independence. Being able to design and print their own advanced engines could finally break their dependence on Western suppliers, shielding their aerospace industry from political tensions and trade wars. The effects ripple outwards from there, threatening the foundations of the entire aviation supply chain. The current model is a complex dance of thousands of suppliers shipping parts all over the world. 3D printing could just erase that complexity. Why wait months for a forged part from a factory halfway across the world when you could theoretically print one on demand, right next to the final assembly line? Then there's the cost. While the high-end printers and powdered metals are expensive now, the long-term math is powerful. Additive manufacturing cuts down on material waste gets rid of the need for expensive custom tooling, and makes assembly far simpler. This could eventually lead to planes that are a lot cheaper to build and fly. Of course, a race is already on. The Western giants aren't standing still. GE Aerospace has been a leader here, its Leap engine famously uses 19 3D printed fuel nozzles. Their massive GE9X engine has over 300 3D printed parts. Pratt & Whitney is also using the tech to speed up development, especially for military engines. But what makes the Chinese test so important is its scope. This wasn't just about printing a few brackets or nozzles, it was about building and flying an engine where the entire core structure came out of a printer. It's a powerful proof of concept that raises the stakes for everyone. The impact also goes way beyond commercial jets. This kind of lightweight, powerful, and potentially cheap engine is a perfect fit for the booming market of unmanned aerial vehicles, UAVs, drones, and even cruise missiles, where the 160-kilogram thrust of the test engine fits perfectly. This technology could enable the rapid design and production of advanced engines for a whole new generation of unmanned aircraft. And this breakthrough isn't happening in a vacuum. It comes alongside China's other major advances in propulsion, including successful tests of hypersonic engines. Together, it all paints a picture of a broad, deep, and incredibly ambitious national strategy to master the future of flight. This technology is set to transform aviation, but it won't stop there. From cars to medical implants, the applications are endless. What industry do you think will be most profoundly changed by advanced 3D printing? Let us know in the comments below. That flight test over Inner Mongolia was more than just a test. It proved the real-world viability of a totally new way of building one of our most complex machines. But this story is about more than a clever manufacturing trick. It signals a potential shift in industrial power, challenging a century of Western dominance in the skies. The engine itself was small, but its message is huge. It wasn't just a test of an engine, it was a test of a new industrial future. A future that might not be forged in fire, but printed into existence, one layer at a time.